All right, um, let's go edit the layout we created before, and I'm still in the same drawing here. You know, we got these symmetric relationships that you can kind of scoot them out of the way. Um, now, you know, you can select things like your motion arm, for example, and come down, and I gave it a mass of 20 pounds per, you know, 20 pounds. So, you know, from what it was at default. Um, exit out of your sketch layout. Let me go ahead and save this thing. I don't think I ever did. Uh, no. Beyond basics, and we'll save it as just that. That's fine. <coughs> okay. And I had to turn on this, the motion works add-on, so I got it set up to uh, solve works motion. So I got it set up to add it on startup for now on. You got a motion study, and instead of doing an animation, we want to do a motion here. Okay, so in here, you know, a motion analysis, so I can go apply things like a spring. Alright, and um, I want to put the K factor to 5 pounds per inch. Um, but you can choose different types of springs you know, from linear or, you know, what have you. Um, okay, now, like I said, we can go down here and use the damper. So, set that to two pounds. Um, and we can change cosmetic properties, like the, you know, the diameter of the coil you know the diameter of the spring so you know number of turns etc <coughs> but they're really strictly cosmetic um, you know hit OK um, but again that's for cosmetic purposes so now, I'm going to drag this key point, you know, out to 8 seconds. <coughs> okay, for the length of the study we're going to do. Okay, now I'm going to go apply a force. I'm going to apply it to here. Now, we need to reference it to something, so we'll reference it to the top plane. So it establishes a direction for the vector. Um, he hadn't got to the action and reaction part yet. Um, but, you know, the force can be constant, step, harmonic, segments, data points, expression, or you can load an expression, you know, load an expression from a file. Still don't know what load references are, um, but load-bearing faces, you know, would be appropriate. But since we're not dealing with solid geometry here, um, that doesn't make much sense. But go ahead and put five pounds, you know, for a force. All right. Um, okay, now that we calculate or, or put that force in there, we're going to hit calculate. Okay. And basically, you know, it just gets stuck there because that force is continuously applied. It's still calculating it. Man, his computer is so much faster than mine. <laughs> But again, probably because I'm running this Corel capture thing at the same time. I don't know. Um, I'm going to try running it without it. But at any rate, um, you know, on the force, um, we can edit it and change it to a stepped force so that it dies off after a certain amount of time. So instead of saying constant, we can say stepped. Okay, so we can have it so it applies, you know, like five pounds for one second, for example, and then dies off to zero pounds for four seconds, I guess. And then hit calculate. So at one second, you know, the force has died off, and then the spring's doing its job. 
you know, bringing the thing back into equilibrium. And you can see it's at equilibrium now. So if we, you know, slide back through that, uh, uh. okay. And I don't know if you can just step through this or not. I don't see a step command. Certainly, it doesn't slide. You know, it doesn't slide very interactively for some reason. But anyway, you can kind of see at the various points what it's what it's doing. <coughs> but yeah, you can. You know. You know, I've got it set to loop, and I'm just you know hit it in play mode. So. Play from start, just hit play. Damn it, hit stop. I'm going to turn off the loop thing. Shit. Hit it normal. <laughs> okay. Okay, if you want to slide it, you know, you just grab this. You can't grab that bar. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, kind of. Um, scrub through the animation motion here. Okay, you know, another really cool thing you do is you can go to the results and, and plots. So you can, you know, do a look at momentum, energy, and power, um, which may be a little screwy since we didn't put our center of mass. And again, if we we're dealing with real parts, I think um, SolidWorks could actually figure all that shit out for us, but we're not dealing with parts, um, just sketches. Um, but let's, you know, look at displacement, okay, um, and linear displacement, and <coughs> okay, and we'll look at magnitude, Okay, and we've got to select some reference points for it to, you know, the one fixed point and then our point that's in motion. Um, click OK, and basically, you know, we got a plot here, so, you know, you can see where we're at in time and what's going on and what its resulting displacement is. So, um, Since I really wasn't paying attention when I created these parts, I mean they don't really have any uh, defined length. Um, you know, this is still in inches, so you know it displaces up to 12 inches. <coughs> you know, but you can tell where it is in time, etc. So it's pretty cool. Okay, I've altered a few of the spring properties. You know. Um, down from what we had it, you know, I'll show you what I did, you know, th three pounds instead of five pounds, instead of being two ounce, two pounds of dampening, I took it down to half a pound, so, um, but you can kind of see, you know, that we got a little bit of, uh, you know, more interesting of a plot taking place here now. Yeah, I guess that's at the one second mark, so that's when our force is released right here. So, but you can see the, the spring, you know, actually having some kickback, you know, from the applied force, even while it's applied, so it's fighting back. I found it very interesting because it's a five pound spring and they applied a f five pound force, and, you know, it's just straight up, you know, so it's not like a torque or anything. But, you know, it's interesting, you know, how that, you know, the spring compressed, you know, but this was able to compress it fully, you know, to the limit of its range, I suppose. Anyway, it's pretty slick what this can do. Still wish it plotted out the vectors and shit while it was doing that, though.
looks like you can export the data to um, you know as at least comma delimited uh, data you know raw data from this um, beyond basics that's a good place to put it so anyway it's a program you could use like in C or sh some shit you know or a bunch of data you could use in C and I don't know if you can save the plots though I mean that's uh, I'm not and cover that you know it looks like let's see well, results oh, okay interesting time linear displacement I guess these are just the results from its calculations probably not my little study it does say plot though And say it's suppressed. Anyway, um, so you know, if you can save the animation anyway with that save. Good. It's ready. Dinner's ready. And here's our resulting AVI file. So, so yeah, I just you know clicked on the save button there. Okay, it was pretty interesting turning on gravity. Um, <laughs> show you what it did. <laughs> Uh, overwhelmed the shit out of the forces and everything else we applied to it um, and everything fell I don't know what what the hell happened to it all <laughs> guess it fell you know, it's uh, it just keeps right on falling see <laughs> so it applied it uh, to everything in the drawing here including our little thing But like I said, our force, as far as I know, is still uh, alive here. You know, for the same step, but uh, I think at about 25 and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's recalculate. Okay, good. You know, forces enough to overwhelm gravity, but you know, you can see there. So let me go ahead and um, let me stop that recalculation and let's look at our spring here. Uh, I'll go ahead and set it to a higher value now. back to five pounds and then dampen it at two like yeah I'll go ahead and set it back to its original value recalculate it <coughs> so pretty slick <coughs> so for everything falling you know uh, forever you know, probably shouldn't have made that that long um, long of an animation. Let's see, where's the replay button? Okay, forces let off and you know, spring didn't dampen it very much, so I mean I already dampened it quite a bit actually. Um, <coughs> spring still isn't behaving quite like I would have would would expect expect more oscillation in it. Um, recalculate.
That looks good. Oh shit, I need to set this lower. Okay. Now let's do a plot. See what it looks like between this and this uh, for a displacement magnitude. Okay, so yeah, you can see the dampening, <coughs> you know, the spring back effect take place. You know, the application of a force, which is at 20 pounds more than enough to keep it up against the force of gravity. And, um, anyway, looks pretty cool. So, like I said, I still don't know how to save these friggin' things. But, um, uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, fuck a piece of You know, I'm recording the whole, um, his whole video on motion studies, which is quite cool. I mean, he actually, you know, gets into simulating solids, and there's this little block that, you know, first drops out of the air, and then tumbles off this other block, and then he adjusts it, hooks a motor up to this li set of link linkages, you know, which actually kicks the block up before it's able to fall, um, so you know, and, and basically turns this thing off and on uh, right here so you can look at it at different angles. Um, so anyway, it's pretty slick, you know, the physics is calculus, but yeah, you see that block at first, you know, just falls off due to gravity like those pulleys all did, but then eventually sets it so this this is, is assembly, which is motor driven, you know, kicks it up into the air, so <laughs> it's pretty cool.